Hey, it's Stu, Lost in Space Season 3 Guests. Visit to a Hostile Planet, written by Peter Packer. Time Tunnel had just been axed, so Irwin Allen shifted time travel plots into Lost in Space. The Jupiter 2 is in 1947, and because Peter Packer wrote it, we've got these sort of hillbilly characters again. Next is uh, Kidnapped in Space, Silver Man on the left and on the right. Well, let's just say, uh, last night I watched this episode with a male viewer, and that male viewer liked this woman on the right. Uh, for obvious reasons, shall we say, enough said. These people play around with time, but the previous visit to Hostile Planet did a better job at dealing with time, but this is still quite good and energetic. Next is Hunter's Moon. This guy in front of you is the uh, titled Hunter. He's hunting down John Robinson. This episode is noteworthy as it has very little comedy of the season two. It's all played very straight and I give it full marks for that. Hunter's Moon is very, very good. Wonderful, in fact. Space Destructors. After a few episodes set in space, we're back on a bloody alien planet again. But the good thing is this is season three. We're not stuck on an alien planet all the time. The Jupiter 2 simply lifts off and lands, lifts off and lands. The Jupiter 2 does a lot of taking off and landing in this season. Will and Dr. Smith go inside a cave and find a machine that makes uh, white aliens like the one you're looking at right now. This episode's very good, very energetic, very good indeed. Then it is uh, cavemen standing in front of time tunnel props. I love this episode, very straight faced. I like that, very good. And great music cues. Next is the Haunted Lighthouse, aka the Haunted Spaceship. Hey, yeah, Dr. Smith finds a woman. This woman looks like someone from uh, one of those Star Trek original series episodes, the way she's dressed. But the episode is all about Penny finding this obnoxious little brat with pointed ears. The best thing about this episode is the musical score. The musical score is absolutely brilliant. Then it is Flight into the Future, and we get a cameo of the uh, Cyclops, the giant Cyclops from There Were Giants in the Earth from Season 1. But now, now he is in colour. Whoopee! But the episode is more about these people uh, wearing costumes from the 1950 motion picture Destination Moon. Then it is Space Creature, written by William Welsh. This is the second time Owen Allen gave us a uh, monster dressed in a sheet. The first time it was done in a third season voyage to the bottom of the sea titled Shadow Man. Deadliest of the species. Okay, the actor's name in front of you, it's Ron Gans. This guy has a really sort of shady history. One of his jobs was um, narrating trailers for pornographic videos. I'm not going to go any further than that, thank you. Ron Gans sends Silvermen to the Robinson campsite. Meanwhile, we have the robot falling in love with a another robot with a sexy female voice. Now, what we have here is um, if season two did, did, did this sort of storyline, it would be terrible. But season three could do this sort of storyline and uh, make it OK. You know, that was the magic of season three. Then it is Leonard Stone as Mr. Farnham. Over the decades, I've seen this guy in so many things. And I always think of him as Mr. Farnham from Lost in Space. Stu from Australia, signing out.